After wanting to own this gadget for a decade, and actively looking for one for 7 months, I am finally able to bring you guys my review of the Cybeco, one of the coolest gadgets from the early 2000s. Let's get right into it. The Cybeco, as the box proclaims, is a messaging device, a video game console, a PDA, and a little computer. As you can tell by the frankly terrifying faces on the box, this device was marketed to us teenagers. Yeah, this box just screams late 90s to me, as this was originally released in the year 2000, although my revision is 1.3 from 2001, which removes the power switch and integrates it into the escape key. There was also another revision of the Cybeco, named the Cybeco Extreme, which looks very early to mid 2000s with that silver colour. It reminds me of my old calculator. The Extreme had an updated CPU, updated firmware, more RAM, a microphone, better wireless range, and more. However, they are harder to find. The device was created by David Yang, at the time living in Russia. When he was hospitalized in 1999, his boredom was what allowed him to create a concept for the Cybeco. After receiving funding and creating a prototype, he came to a businessman in Chicago named Donald Vishnevsky. The two created Cybeco Wireless Incorporated. This Russian influence was a big factor in not being able to find funding initially, as many at the time were scared to invest in Russian technology. Yang and Vishnevsky had the brilliant idea to transform this Russian image and to appeal to the youth of the time by copying styling ideas from Japan potentially using things like the Bandai Wonderswan and Tamagotchi as inspirations. Marketing was also influenced by Japan, which we can even see in the name of the device, the Saibiko. Sounds very Japanese. Even the initial advertising used the style very reminiscent of Japanese advertisements, being very crazy and avant-garde. And you know, the Japanese text and the borderline racist accent with the advertising helped to sell the idea too. With this device, what we can see is just how wacky the shape is. Both of its shape and the translucent colourful plastic, it reminds me of electronics from the 90s like the iMac G3. I'm a fan of its bridge, which reminds me of the red hydrogen phone. However, the holding position is not very comfortable and you'll end up using this device like a smartphone. We can see a big mushy d-pad as well as an escape key above it that acts as the power button as I previously stated. We also see some keys reminiscent of PC keyboards, with delete, insert, tab, select and enter. And speaking of keyboards, under these keys we have a tiny keyboard with all the keys you'd expect. If you guys remember, in the 90s and 2000s, typing on mobile devices tended to involve using a keypad with T9 predictive text. Nothing like that here though, we have a full QWERTY keyboard, although the keys are pretty small. This is why we have a stylus on the back. Yes, despite the UI looking very mobile-like, the screen is not touch capable, the stylus is for the keys. To be honest, I found typing on it fine, although that might be because I don't trim my nails fully. We also have a help button, and above the screen we have shortcuts to parts of the interface. On the bottom of the device we have a PC MCIA slot, which would have been used for a 1MB expansion card and for an MP3 player. You can't use PC cards with it. Cybeco also planned to create a wired and wireless modem, but this fell through. It was set to cost $100 for the wired one and $200 for the wireless one. Seeing as the wireless modem was to cost twice as much as the Cybeco, no wonder it was never released. We can also see a DC jack, a serial interface, a research switch, a speaker, an antenna, and leaky batteries. Yeah, that was about to happen, wasn't it? After our first power run, we got a setup that asks you for your name, birthday, and your interests. <laughs> what is my purpose? Oh jeez. And then we get thrown into the main menu, so let's go through all the features. Within you and me, about you lets you write information about what potential friend or partner you would like to meet, rather hilariously. It's like Tinder but for teenagers in the early 2000s. You can also write your own bio and create a business card with your phone number and email for others to see if they would like to get into contact with you outside of a Cybeco. Chat lets you pick a chat room named after a subject that you're interested in, like gaming or music. The Cybeco doesn't work on 2G or Wi-Fi, it's a close range radio frequency device, letting you talk to people around your neighbourhood within a 300 meter or 0.19 mile range. This means that I unfortunately have no one to talk to on the Cybeco, but you can imagine how it works, it's rather similar to PictoChat without the ability to draw. Email lets you send and receive emails from your computer. Yeah, because of the lack of mobile internet or Wi-Fi, the only way to send emails on this device is via serial cable, which makes it a pretty pointless feature, since you can just use the computer that you have right next to you to send those emails instead, on a better keyboard too. This wasn't always meant to be the case however, Cybeco had announced the Cywig, a wireless access point for your Cybeco that would allow you to browse web internet and access your emails wirelessly. However, this must have not sold very well, since I can only find one reference to it. Cybeco was set to have a wireless and wired modem, as I stated earlier, which would have allowed you to access emails and internet away from your computer too. Cycommunity is a friend finder that is shown on the box, allowing you to see local people with Cybecos. Unfortunately, this doesn't work without other Cybecos in the vicinity, but I'm sure you can imagine what it looks like. In a way, the Cybeco is like a street pass device, you know? 
You can only use it around other Psybeco users and then you can exchange information about your favorite thing in life or your bio or whatever. The social aspect of a Psybeco is really cool and I think a lot of Psybeco's ideas have ended up in other future devices and even social medias. Anyway, we also have a calendar, a file manager, a text editor, organizer and an address book. There's also a calendar of sorts called Study Tools. It allows you to write down where your school assignments are so you don't forget. The music composer allows you to um, place notes, invert them, change the tempo. That's honestly where my knowledge ends on this. <laughs> it's like a ringtone maker on your old Nokia basically, just a bit more advanced. Let me now go through the pre-installed games with you. The first one is Pinball Pro, which is an honestly fun pinball game. You have to get your ball into these black holes. After you go into the hole enough times, you go up a level. You have to make sure that your ball doesn't fall into the right side by flipping the right paddle. I could definitely waste my time on this. The next game is Lost in Labyrinth, which is the dungeon crawler. You have a large map that you're able to traverse. The map is split into 9 sections, filled with treasure that depletes based on how much you open the map, as well as health, armor, ammo and creatures to shoot with your gun. The controls confuse me at first, you only tap once to move, you don't hold down the keys. This means that if you want to turn left, you do it by just pressing left, waiting for the 90 degree turn animation and continue moving. This can be disorientating, especially due to the wall textures all looking the same. Thankfully you can navigate the game entirely via map, which also gets a little confusing, but it helps in movement. There are also keys to collect, presumably to open extra doors. This is a neat concept and I would have loved it as a kid, but now it just feels a bit too janky to play. I will maybe finish this game at some point. The next game is... Reversi! That's right! Let's move on, because I don't know what I'm doing. Men's Room 2 is up next, a breakout style game with loot roll, toilets and bombs. The toilets can only be hit dead on and if there's a toilet roll above them, they will fall. Things can also fall when you hit the bombs above too. I am pretty sure this game is a clone of another game, but I am not sure the name of that game. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments what the original game is called though. The next game is actually a trailer for Cylandia, a game we have to download from the internet, or at least you would have done 20 years ago when the website was still online, but we'll get onto that. The next game is Saibiko Superbike, an outrun style game where for each stage you have one lap qualifier and then get to compete against AI. I'm sure I've seen this kind of game a million times before, so all I have to say is that it's quite fun. Blazing Board is the last game and it's an on-rail game like Subway Surfers. What you have to do is jump onto the ramps and do stunts with the D-pad as well as grind rails and collect things off the floor, all while making sure not to crash. I actually played something very similar to this on the Samsung feature phone, which you guys can check out a video of in the card above. You can then submit your high score to... Best Buy, I guess. So yeah, overall, minus reversi, all of these games are quite a right to play, to be honest with you. I would have loved this device as a kid, especially since I never owned a handheld console. Unless you count the Asterix and Oblix and McDonald's toy as a handheld, then yes, I owned one handheld. Oh yeah, I also did own a PSP. Now, if you want more games, what Saibiko expected you to do is either buy CD bundles with games or to download them from their website for free. However, as you'd expect, this website hasn't been around for a very long time, and the website that hosted backups of games and programs has been down for months now, and it doesn't look like it'll be back online anytime soon. Thankfully, one YouTuber has archived the zip files, and he is the sole reason that I'm able to make this video. I'll drop his archive onto archive.org for any of you with Saibikos are looking to get one. Their sort of process wasn't plug and play, but it wasn't difficult either. I first tried to install Easy Load onto my Windows 10 machine, but because it hooks into Explorer, it was broken on newer versions of Windows. I got the software to work on Windows XP, but I had to manually fetch drivers from my serial to USB adapter. I also faced the issue of not having enough storage, since the Cybeco has a tiny amount of storage. But in the end, I was able to load some games onto the Cybeco. Since this collection has hundreds of games, I haven't been able to play even a quarter of them all, but here are the ones I played. The first game I played is Cyrace 2, which is a 3D racing game that is over 100 kilobytes in size, which is large for a Cybeco game. It's certainly an impressive looking game, but it's largely empty to play with how plain the track is and how the gameplay feels. I would probably play again, but with how large it is, I probably wouldn't keep it. Bang Ball 2 is a weird mix of tennis and pong. It's quite fast, quite unfair, but quite fun to play, and I would play it again. Pinball 3 is an evolution of Pinball Pro, feeling closer to XP Space Cadet with its layout and themes of collecting missions and hitting targets, and yet it somehow feels less fun to play than Pinball Pro. The physics feel floatier and more boring. I think just like with Space Cadet, this relies on having the highest score, there are no levels to go through, but there aren't enough bumpers and targets like on Space Cadet to make it fun. Froggy's Race is another 3D racing game. Despite being different in theme, I prefer it over Psy Race 2. There are obstacles you have to avoid by dodging them or by jumping, and you have to avoid other opponents by dodging them too. Next up is Galaxy Race. 
Similar to Froggy's race, you have to avoid obstacles, in this case meteorites. Here, however, you can shoot. You have to choose between accelerating or shooting, which gives a strategic element. Would play again. I've also found a game called Skyland, a pretty fun platformer where you have to avoid enemies and objects like mosquitoes and collect all the items on the map. I think they're fruits. It has really nice 2D sprite work and animations, and I will absolutely play this again. I couldn't get Cylandia to work, which is a shame because this game was advertised everywhere, and I would have liked to know what it is. It is absolutely massive in size though. This video is already pretty long, so if you guys enjoyed me looking at these games, I can look at more in future videos. In terms of apps, I found a personal planner, which is kind of like a journal. I found a paint app that is about as basic as you would expect from a monochrome screen, but I could imagine someone with a lot of talent and spare time in the 2000s would have enjoyed this. I've also found a grocery list app. I don't know why someone would use this over just a piece of paper, but hey, it's cool. I've also found a calendar that doesn't do anything other than show you days. You can't set reminders or appointments. I've also found a converter app, which is nice. There is a basic program, but that requires the one megabyte memory expansion. And I installed the web browser, which won't work without the Cywig. Despite the Cybeco selling millions of units, they quickly fed into obscurity. As for the reason why, well it's actually pretty simple, the cell phone. By 2003, phones had SMS, cameras, internet browsing and email functionality. You could use your phone anywhere, not having to be in a close proximity to someone, or having to be tethered to your computer. Prices kept falling whilst phones started to get better and better too. There was no service charges or monthly fees before a Cybeco like with a phone, but in America, phone carriers started to introduce family plans and within the UK, Pay as you go is an alternative to paying for an expensive contract. As far as I'm aware, these were never released outside of America and the UK, so I never got to experience one as a child. For those of you who managed to get through this entire video, I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed creating it, and I hope to see you in the next one!